Okay, so last thing we want to talk about is the animated series. Mm -hmm. We watched season one, episode 14, mm -hmm. and it is called The Slaver Weapon. So good. Okay, so my favorite thing about this episode is that, <laughs> I know this is horrible to say, but Shatner wasn't in it, or Captain Kirk wasn't in it. He was not in it. He was not even mentioned, actually. He wasn't. And it was kind of interesting, because it was an away mission, and Spock was leading the away mission, and he had Sulu and Ahura with him. And it was a very diverse group, and I thought that they all did excellent together in the mission. They did. I mean, Spock, you know, was a know-it-all. And to, in the, to me... Just personally, in the animated series, he's more of a know-it-all than in the original it is, yeah. series. And I don't know if it's just because it's a cartoon, and you can only kind of in the '70s they could only they only had so much manipulation in cartoons, I guess, in the animation. Well, they got his eyebrow arch down. Yeah, <laughs> but when something happens, and then Spock's like, you you know you know it's not gonna happen. You know he's like, yeah, right, like you, I got this. <laughs> But he, like, constantly corrects, well, actually, I know you're a expert in um, weaponry, but let me tell you this fact. You're wrong. When you say, when you give a sentence and then say, but, you instantly negate what you said in the first sentence. Yeah. So don't even tell me you know I'm a weapons expert, because, I mean, you know it, so just shut up about it. And, well, it started out, it, Spock was clearly the leader of the mission, and they had this box with him on a shuttle. They weren't even on the Enterprise. They were on a shuttle. Right, yeah. Um, so they had this box, and uh, between between Spock and Ahura, they were telling about this ancient civilization, like, I think it was billions of years ago, yeah. that um, this civilization, of they were called the Slavers, mm -hmm. and they had these boxes, and inside each box was like... A, a key, like a, a weapon or certain technologies and different things like this. Yeah, Spock, for example, he said one box that was found, once it was opened, it um, had a grenade with a pin pulled. Right. And there, he gave a couple other examples, and then he said, you know, because of that, you know, not knowing what's in it and how dangerous it could be, you know, there's, uh, they send experts out to retrieve these boxes. And not so subtly, meaning, I'm an expert, guys. Listen to me. This is why I'm a he the head of this mission. Mm -hmm. But um, basically, inside the boxes, all time is suspended. Yeah. Like, you can put something in the box and shut it, and a billion years pass, mm -hmm. and you open it, and the thing that was inside there never knew a billion years passed. Yeah. It doesn't age, nothing. Basically like a stasis chamber. Yeah. In, in, a, in a tiny compartment. Right. So, um, so they had this box and it started glowing and Ahura's like, why is it glowing? And Spock's like, well, that means there's another one nearby. And there was one nearby in a star system. And Spock explained that the only stasis box detector is another stasis box. Yeah. And... Sulu had a funny line at that point. It was like, well, if, <laughs> if the a stasis box is the only way to detect another one, how did they find the first one? And then Spock's like, hmm, purely good by question. Probably by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so they go to this little icy planet in this star system. And oh, and Ahura, by the way, throws in, I hate these icy planets. <laughs> And Spock's like, we're not here on vacation. Right. Like, like suck it up and do your job. We're not here for a leisure, <laughs> bitch. Jesus. Don't I take enough <laughs> of your shit when we're on the Enterprise? Can't you just be cool for once? <laughs> so basically what had happened is this race, who a billion years ago were a race of slavers, mm -hmm. in the past few hundred years they had been at war co almost constantly with the federation they were trying to take over and they tried four different times and they always lost the war yeah and per the last treaty they were not supposed to have weapons mm -hmm. all right so um it's these monsters they almost look like the beast out of beauty and the beast that's what it reminded me of but green yeah so it was several of them and they had an empty box oh oh the slavers no those little cat people they weren't the slavers they were the kazindi Kazindi, oh, the Kazindi. They were the Kazindi. Kazinti. Kazinti. Yeah. yeah, the Kazinti. Yeah. All right, so I got it mixed up. Sorry, the the people were not green. Sorry, we hadn't got to that part yet. Yeah. Kazinti are not green. Anyway, 
they do, like Kara said, sorry, look a bit like the beauty. They're they're the beast. beastly. They have yeah. the they have the fur and the fangs and all that. Yeah. So basically, they obviously knew uh, that this box was being taken through the quadrant. Yeah. On a shuttle, because they were there waiting with an empty box. They had found one, opened it, and there was nothing inside. Yeah. So they used it in the star system because they knew it would lure the other people to come check it out because they knew the Federation was always trying to find them and make sure that whatever was in it was destroyed or deactivated or whatever, whatnot. Yeah. <coughs> so it was basically a setup, and they all three get captured. Mm-hmm. They get put into this like these cat people with like weird fish sonar looking ears um they throw this web that looks like a spider's web down on the ground and is it uh the police Spock? web yeah Spock immediately Spock does what everything is and he like goes into these details and they're like <laughs> so anyway they and while on this police web they can't move like they can't move their feet like they can obviously move their body up and down to sit but they cannot move and um so they're trapped on the ship and they've got them in this police web so and they start to walk in and Spock obviously recognizes the species because he knows every goddamn thing and he says okay first of all Uhura and she has a, the funniest reaction to this uh, he basically says they're not going to talk to you because you're female and they think females are stupid well no he said that the females of their race are unintelligent are unintelligent yeah now I don't think that's true. I think that's just uh, kind of like a, a patriarchal thing. society. Keep the women oppressed. Yeah. So anyway, hey, kind of like the, no, I'm going to never mind. So she's like, "What? Excuse me, bro. <laughs> All right, I'll be quiet." And then so he t- turns to Sulu and starts to tell him, "Look, they're not gonna be wanting to talk to me because I'm Vulcan, and they know Vulcans are vegetarians." And they despise meat eaters. They, I mean, uh, herbivores. They see herbivores as weak and um, complicit and just hippie loving. You know that kind of that kind of thing. And but he tells Sulu, you know, and he sees that there's a telepath coming in. Right. And this telepath cat is kind of cowered thing, over. Cowered over, and his eyes are all bloodshot, like he just smoked a fat blunt. <laughs> And, um, you know, in his posture is just, like, defeated. Right. And so Spock continues to explain that when they um, try to read other people's minds, it really physically just drains them. And so he told Sulu he's going to try to read your mind because you're human. He respects you more than me. He knows you're a fighter. Or a meat eater. A, a meat eater. And he said, so... What you'll be able to feel him try to read your mind. Think about eating a vegetable. And that will basically gross him out. <laughs> and you'll be good. Think about vegetables. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Spock has given them all this background information. And while, before he gives all this, the leader comes in and opens the box that Spock had on the shuttle. Mm-hmm. Um, the box they had was empty. So, he opens this. And there was a picture of, like, a green alien thing which it's where the, the green comes in that i thought she was talking about earlier i was a little little early on that so this is actually like what they assume to be a photo of the slaver race yeah and there's also a chunk of fresh meat yeah which, which ahura is like freaking like it's been in there a billion years oh my god and it's fresh look at it <laughs> oh god can i have some but they did test the, um <coughs> kazenti did test on it <coughs> and it was poisoned so yeah. yeah nobody ate it and then there was also a weapon so the Kazinti are start going through there's like all these different levels and settings on the weapon and every time they change it it changes into a different shape and like one gives out a concentrated laser beam <clears throat> excuse me one gives out a makes it into a telescope it's like a, it's like a multi-purpose tool it is and they keep and every time they because you you can see on the little thing there's a little dial with notches and they keep moving it down and every time they say well th- this is this can't be a weapon because there's no sight on it this can't be a weapon because there's no sight on it and um they go through they think all the settings all, all of the settings mm-hmm. and at this point when they did the little they did one of the things and it was uh, an energy absorber and that uh allowed them to be able to move off that little police net yep. and so uhura for the first time first time 
just, she doesn't say anything to the boy. She's like, shit, I'm getting out of here. And she starts booking it. But, you know. Well, Spock had already told her if there was a way for them to get out of it, for her to start running, he said they're not really going to chase you first because as a female, they think you're unintelligent. Yeah. So, she starts running. And, of course, you know, she gets like six she steps. And she's she, like, ah! She didn't zigzag. <coughs> well, the genius didn't tell her to yet. Can't do anything without Spock telling us to. So, <laughs> tell us it's all right. So, of course, they get them back in the police web, and they keep trying all these settings, and they get all frustrated. And so the police web still is, um, they're able to get out of it. So he whispers over to uh, Spock. The know-it-all whispers over to Sulu and Hora. you know, okay, we're going to make a run for it, and you zigzag. Don't forget. And he tells him, don't forget to zigzag. So, Ahura and Sulu start zigging and zagging and wigging and wagging. And, and Spock goes for the leader. He does, like, jumping in the air. He does. Like a, yeah, a double kick punch. Like, right in his ribs. And then he he starts zigging and a zagging and a weaving. And he, a, and a, well, he did that so that he could grab the weapon from him. He did, yeah. So, he knocks that guy over and... Of course, the weapon at this time is like looks like a huge lollipop for a giant, and uh, grabs it. And of course, you know they get a horror again. She's like, oh, again, right? You know. So they have a horror, and Spock and Sulu got away. Yeah. And that's when they have the conversation about what the weapon might do. And so that's when Spock said, "Well, we didn't try the null setting." Mm -hmm. So he put it on null, and it changed into a different shape, and then like pointed it way off, and it's like a particle bomb. Like it is, and they they notice as well. Look, there's a sight on it. This must be a weapon. So they shoot it, and in true World War Two style, mushroom cloud, big mushroom cloud, yeah, yeah, way far off, Mm -hmm. not anywhere close by. Well, then of course there's shock reverberations and all that, and um. At this point, the um, he also told Sulu that he injured the captain, and the captain wasn't going to call for backup because his honor had he had been he had been bested in battle by a vegetarian, basically, and so that he would want to you know defend his honor before he called for help. Yeah, because it would bring shame upon him and his crew if he were to call for help and leave this herbivore over here alive. Right. You know. Right. Um. Or or not fought him and died himself, and he um. Spock also, being the know-it-all that he is, throws in the fact that he knows that the chuffed captain, as of right now, is okay. Because the chuffed captain radioed Sulu, you know, because he communicates directly. Only with the human. Yeah, with Sulu. And tells him, you know, I've got two broken ribs. I've not even bandaged or, or tended to them. And I will not tend to them until I, you know, encounter that stupid herbivore again and then this one spock explains well he's probably okay because you know they also have vertical ribs and i kicked him above one heart i mean like how do you i mean he just knows a lot he's a smart guy smart guys can be sexy he is i'm not saying he's not it's just like he's just like (laughs) throwing the facts out like yeah so, th- basically, the uh, Gazinti are trying to use Uhura as a bargaining chip to get the weapon back from Spock and Sulu. And then, for some reason, they're all together. They get them captured again. What happened, dude? Well, what happened there was um, during the aftershock, after... Oh, we got... Yeah, I remember that. During the aftershock, um, because before they had it, before they put it on the null setting, they had it on that, still had it on the energy absorber. So they couldn't transport them there. You know, all the energy was in that, yeah. um, in that weapon. Yeah. And then the aftershock, you know, and they were just kind of caught off guard and then transported in. Them. Yeah. Yeah. So back on the police web. So when now that the the Gazinti have seen what this weapon can do, they're trying to figure out how to recreate it, and um, they find a they accidentally find another setting to where it's like a computer that they're talking to, mm-hmm. and basically it was. <clears throat> You know, this weapon had been in, a bo- in the box for a billion years, so it woke up and it knew it was a military weapon, but it couldn't identify anybody around it. So the Kazinti leader is like, you know, how do you find this setting and how you do you... will th- tell You me. will tell me, you know, and is like demanding that this computer show him the most lethal setting. So they're like, okay, we've got it on the most lethal setting. So Wait, they- pause. By the way, we feel like Majel, Majel, 
was the voice of the weapon. Yes. I'm very, 99% sure. I need to go check that. Yeah. But, um, so the, the Kazinti take the weapon outside. Okay, well, we, the, the computer has put it on the most lethal setting, so let's test it out. So they pointed it and fired it. And, well, wait, before that, before that, as they're going outside, Uhura is, starts talking about, well, oh my God, they're going to be able to use the weapon now. And Marty Pants, actually, they're I not. really don't think they will. Because... And then he starts posing all these questions, like, you know, he asks questions like, well, say, what if you were a weapon, and you were found, and da-da-da-da. And an alien was demanding your most powerful setting. And then, uh, and then of course, Sulu pipes in. He's got to throw his smarty pants in there for the episode. And then Ahura, it just, I guess a light bulb goes off in her female, unintelligent brain. And she's like, oh yeah, guys. <laughs> Oh, that makes so much sense. Well, they had to mansplain it to her first. They did, I guess, had to mansplain it. So, as they're doing that... The Kazinti go fire the weapon. Mm -hmm. And it implodes on them and creates a huge crater and destroys the, the wep destroys itself and all of them. And so Sulu walks so, out. Conveniently, just where the Kazinti were, not the three feet over here where Spock and Sulu and Ura were. Yeah. So, <laughs> they walk out there, the Star Starfleet walk, uh, people walk out there... And cleverly, and Captain Obviously, Sula says, well, I guess the weapon's not here anymore. No, he it? said, well, there's no sign of the weapon. You it would have looked, looked good in a museum. And, and what then, does Spock say? Well, it never would have made it to a museum. That it, We never could have allowed that much power to exist. It was a good episode. It was a good episode. Um, and then Kara... Um, rewound a line for me to hear that I missed out um, and it was it was talking about the past creeping up and affecting the future because mm -hmm. Spock was talking about you know this weapon that the slavers had a billion years ago you know got into a situation where it could have started a war mm -hmm. in the present day you know like mm -hmm. if if they had just killed all of them and kept playing around with the weapon and hadn't demanded it you know and figured the setting out figured to go to the null setting yeah you know make it like that's like the off setting yeah um they could have easily figured it out and then they would you know the federation had defeated them four times before and with that kind of weapon they could just wipe the federation out they did and um spock also <clears throat> made the observation that the only one up that the slavers had on the Federation was that the far reaching energy, uh, energy yeah, beam. Yeah, everything else was did. stuff and that they had discovered hundreds of years ago. Yeah, which I, I'm guessing is part of the reason that, you know, the four times they battled, the four wars they had with the, the human race, that's why Starfleet, you know, and the human race um, prevailed. Yeah. Because of most of the advantages. Right. It was a very so. good episode. It was, it was like I said, you know, it was away from the Enterprise. It wasn't the main, you know, uh, uh, Kirk and Scotty and, you know, uh, the main bridge crew. Yeah. It was it was just a little bit of yeah. the a more diverse crew setting. William Shatner must have been having a... Maybe he had a cold. Spa day. <laughs> but all in all, it was a good, very good episode. It was a good episode. It was. So, oh, it's cold. Or chilly. It's not cold. It's chilly. You know, and it's strange because I'm usually the one that. Well, I you have long cold. sleeves on. You have yeah, a. But look how thin this is. Yeah, but that's the kind of material that'll hold in some warmth. I guess. I've got short sleeves on, and I don't. You have pants on, and my leg. I have a dress on. I do. That's true. I've got um, flannels, flannel yeah. pants on. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us again. We hope that the, the birds chirping and the wind hasn't been too much of an issue. If it is, then I'll find out when we edit it and we won't ever do this again. Okay? As long as you can hear us, I don't care. Right. Like. Y'all aren't watching the YouTube videos anyway. Like. Subscribe. Share. Share. Comment. Comment. Tell your friends. Buy a t-shirt. Buy a t-shirt. Follow us on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, Instagram lives on Tuesday nights Facebook live on Thursday nights except not this past Thursday night but we're going to try to do better next week yeah because I fell asleep before the sun went down so it, it didn't happen and I woke up <laughs> to a hundred text messages at from like Kara. I don't know what time it was about That's okay. or so to missed calls and texts and 
Which was nice because you were checking on me to make sure everything was okay. I know. Yeah, so. I was freaking out just a little bit. I don't know why. I just do that. Because I never ignore your calls, you know. <laughs> so. Alright, guys. We love you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking our stuff. Like it more. Share it more if you see it then you like it if you watch it then you like it so well, it, doesn't even. Just, it doesn't take but just a second to like like i've started being more mindful to do that because i'll see stuff and i'll laugh at it and then i'll just keep scrolling no like it i don't care if it's got a thousand likes i'm gonna go ahead and like it because i'm gonna show my support for that person who took the time to make that video yes so we will see you guys soon we love you so much live long and prosper bitches La 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 <laughs>